Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today I'm going to talk about the Simgot EA500 IEM. This is an $80 chrome-plated IEM from Simgot. Uh, it was sent to me for review, so huge thanks to them. It won't change what I say about it. You've seen videos. If you've seen videos of mine in the past, you know that there are products that have been sent to me before that I can be critical of and things that I buy that I absolutely love. So it won't change anything, but I do want to thank them because it allowed me to get it uh, fairly close to release date, even though I didn't release it right away. It's because I use it a lot, which segues into um, why I may look tired. I don't know how well I'm hiding it, <laughs> um, but basically right before I do any review, I always use the product one last time as it's intended right before filming. It gives me one more final fresh perspective just in case I got something wrong in my notes and I didn't, I missed something at the last minute and naturally I got carried away. I started listening to music for another two or three hours. So here we are past midnight on a work night and go me. Um, that'll be fun tomorrow. But I have a lot of exciting things to say about this. I stayed up using it more for a reason. Um, I really do enjoy these. So stay tuned for the rest of the video and you'll understand why. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe because I'd love to see you at the next one. Now the EA500 uses a single 10 millimeter dynamic driver on each side. It's a dual magnetic circuit, dual cavity structure design. Basically they have a lot of tuning involved inside and the dual magnet array is designed to improve the power handling and resolution, etc. cetera. Um, that's the marketing side. I will explain how that translates into an actual listening experience, but I did want to keep going with the specs. So um, it's rated at 16 ohms. It's 123 to 124 decibel sensitivity, depending on what nozzle you use. And as you can see, it has this really nice all metal look. It is a chrome plated mirror finish IEM, it does feel metallic to the touch. It doesn't feel plasticky or anything. So if you're in a very cold environment and this is in your bag, the first time you put them in your ear, it might feel a little chilly. However, overall, I still found them extremely comfortable. The shape is uh, very, very nicely shaped. There's no hard edges. Everything has a nice smooth uh, curve to it and it felt really comfortable in my ear. Now the EA500 uses a 0.78 millimeter two pin connection which is great because you can use a lot of different aftermarket cables for that if you ever want to change it whether that be for sound quality, running balanced, or simply just changing colors or any combination of above. The cable that's included is a silver plated OFC cable or oxygen free copper. It's fairly thin and light and very flexible and I actually think the shine on it is really really, really nice. It's a pretty looking cable it does have the little chin strap slider, if you will, so this can be pulled down all the way to the base of the cable. And then um, whether you're wrapping it or just want it a little bit more tight, you can pull that up and that'll keep the wires a little bit nicer. It is a right angle. Um, some IEMs go straight and some are a right angle, so I want to point that out just in case. Now, in addition to the cable and IEMs, you also get this nice little travel pouch. It has a stretchy mesh pocket, if you will. That's a really good way to tuck the wire in. It just kind of keeps it more organized. You also get three total tip sizes. The other two tips are smaller and larger one than what the default tip is. And the default tip, the medium tip, is typically what I put in my ear every single time. I usually don't have to switch to a larger or smaller one to get a good seal. These were really skirting the line for me. It's just kind of an odd thing that I noticed. Basically, if I push it in tightly, which normally I, I do, um, I didn't get the perfect seal, especially on my right ear. So maybe my right ear is slightly different than the left. Um, but it, was, it wasn't a perfect seal, it did impact the bass, and the imaging sounded a little odd. I'm not saying it really to fault the EA500 because that's the case with any IEM or headphone. You always want to make sure you have a good seal. So whether you buy this one or something else, make sure you have a good seal because it'll drastically improve the sound. You can always buy different tips online. There's, there's memory foam, there's spin fit, all kinds of stuff, but I do want to point that out just in case. Now, if you're paying attention during the spec part, and I talked about different sensitivity depending on the nozzle type, um, this is an interesting feature of the EA500. This is a moddable uh, IEM. Basically, you can tune it. Now, you can see these little base ports right here, which you can also um, tune on your own. It doesn't have stuff in the box to mess with this, but that vent can be modified, whether you do a partial stuff or seal to change the base. Um, I didn't feel like I needed to do that. I was pretty happy with how it was tuned out of the box. I'm getting ahead of myself. But I want to talk about the nozzle. So the default nozzle is the red nozzle. Basically, there's a red ring when you unscrew it. That's a more neutral, more uh, preferred curve. It's a little bit just slightly less resolving. It's more forgiving depending on the track. And the black nozzle is a little bit more forward on the treble side. 
extremely resolving, but depending on your track, if it's a poorly recorded track, it might be a little harsh. I'm not gonna focus so much on the sound just yet. I'm gonna get into that in just a second. Um, my tip, by the way, when you undo the nozzle, before you take the, um, the tip off, just squeeze it and turn it outward a little bit, you know, counterclockwise, that loosens the seal of the nozzle. So you can see here, as I unscrew it, you're gonna see that red ring. So I'm gonna take that out. And now the driver is exposed. Don't let anything get in there because now there's nothing protecting the driver element. And then you can see the two nozzle differences between the black and the red. The red is right here. This is the black. I'm going to turn it around. And hopefully you can see that, but there is a totally different fill inside the nozzle. They are tuned differently. I don't know if they'll come out with more nozzles, nozzles down the road, um, but that is the difference. So once you've decided which sound profile you like, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is Again, screw this back in, and you'll feel it kind of seal with that rubber ring. Let's make it nice and tight. You don't want that loose, and then I'm good to go. And the tips go on very, very easily. I didn't have any issues getting that back on, and now I'm ready to reconnect it. Now, the hooks are pretty light and flexible. This isn't like a really strong hook that's going to put a lot of pressure on your ear. You know, I don't want to focus too much on this because basically this wasn't an issue. It's light. It's uh, like out of sight, out of mind and it had no problem holding the IEMs in place. Even though they're metal, they have a little bit extra weight to them, they still stayed in my ear just fine. Now I know people are curious about the nozzle diameter, or like the bore size of it, so I'm gonna measure this for you just so you know what the specs are here. And if I close that up, it's about 6.1 millimeters on the outer edge, and that little inner part of the nozzle is, let me make sure I get this correctly here, 5.18 on my digital caliper. So hopefully that helps you in case you were shopping for a particular number. Now SimGut shows two measurements on the back of the box. The red is the default nozzle and you can see that it has a little bit of a smoother curve up in the treble region. And then the blue is the black nozzle and you can see that extra hump in the upper treble. Again, that's a little bit more forward. So I measured both. I'm gonna show you what the measurements look like and then we'll move on to how I heard it and what it sounded like to me. All right, so naturally I measured these IEMs because I wanted to keep a record of everything I review. And what you're looking at now is the EA500 using the red ring. Now you're always gonna have a little peak up here around 8K. That's basically um, the resonance of my microphone. I use an IEC711 uh, coupler. So, and then I do multiple measurements, make sure I have a good seal. What's really cool about the EA500 is these are not measurements of the same IEM. I actually measure the left and right, and they are so, so close together, which is excellent. These have really good driver matching, and that's really important for imaging. I was able to maintain a near dead center, perfect imaging of everything I listened to. Now, if you look at the measurements of the black ring, you can see that the black ring has more treble energy. It picks up, it basically continues the slope from 1K and up, and it just gradually lifts. Uh, in the 2 to 3K region. And then again, if you factor out the coupler resonance uh, that's happening around 8K, normally the red ring that would have dropped down like this. It wouldn't pick back up. So that's why it looks like it falls very dramatically. So when you take that out of the equation, you can see where the lifts are and there is a slightly different tune to it. It's just basically a more forward um, detailed presentation if you're using the black ring. So now it's time to talk about sound quality on a subjective level, my favorite part and why this review is being filmed after midnight, because um, I flip and love the way these things sound. I mean, they have the best detail retrieval uh, and instrument separation I've heard on any IEM under $100 so far. I've demoed a lot. I don't own a ton. I probably own about, maybe, I don't know, 10 or 12 IEMs at the moment. Um, and a lot of them, the majority of them are under $200. Uh, these, the level of resolution and technicality that you get on an IEM of this price will immediately make any other IEM above it, um, you get diminishing returns. You're not getting this drastic step up. I've heard $3,000 IEMs. I've demoed them. I don't own any, but when you get this level of clarity and resolution from an IEM in this price range, it's pretty remarkable. You know, whether the track is extremely complex and you're worried about microdynamics and the ability for the single driver to keep up with the bass at the same time of delivering a very clear separated audio mix in the upper frequencies. Um, you know, whether you have a mix, mixture of vocals, percussion, string instruments, you name it, it does such a remarkable job at preserving that detail. It's, it's shocking. It makes other IEMs that sound good in this price range seem more veiled. 
And I'm not talking purely from a frequency response treble perspective. It's literally that dynamic performance, that technicality that the EA 500s have um, that are frankly mind blowing at this price. It's my favorite IEM I've heard, or my it's probably my favorite sound product I've heard under a hundred dollars because I can't think of any headphone close to this under a hundred or or even at a hundred that would even touch this. The frequency response that comes down to preference. So I can't say this is the best sounding IEM because whether I like it or don't, you will likely want a slightly different tune for yourself. You might want a little bit more bass, a little bit more or less treble, both, whatever it may be. Um, but I can tell you as a starting point and the fact that these take to EQ really well, what you can't fix is poor build quality and comfort, of course. You also can't magically have all this extra detail retrieval that the driver wasn't producing before. You know, two things can produce a 200 hertz signal or tone, but one of them can do it more cleanly, um, whereas another may get sloppy or muddy sounding or incoherent because now it's blurring the instruments, it's dulling everything else that it's trying to do at the same time. Um, so with that being said, when it comes to musical performance, uh, it just blew me away. Now the black nozzle, if I had to travel with one, I would travel with the red nozzle. If I didn't want to bring these extras with me, the red is just more forgiving. Uh, it still has good detail retrieval up top, you know, slightly warmer sound profile because the treble is a little bit relaxed. Um, but the black nozzles are more for like your critical listening night. And if you have a poorly recorded track or a track that's very sibilant or both, this black nozzle is going to expose that. This is not going to hide it. It's going to present every detail possible. So if you're using the black nozzle and you hear a song like Lauren Z from Stanton Moore, um, that is going to be a very rewarding experience. Now it depends on your source gear. I'll get into source gear in just a moment. Um, but this paired with a song like that really showcases how amazing they are from a technical perspective because you can hear every single nuance of that song. It really sounds incredible. Lots of songs do, but that just showcases it because it's recorded well also. Conversely, if you go to a song like You Don't Know How It Feels by Tom Petty, that opening harmonica at the same level as the last song is going to sound, sound a little bit too forward, possibly ear piercing. So you have to maintain a fairly moderate listening volume. I don't listen at things too loud, but that can come across as a little bit jarring for some people because this is gonna let that harmonica basically play as if it was right next to your ear. It's crystal clear, and sometimes you may not want that. Like I said, you can EQ some of it, but by default, the red profile is just gonna, or the red nozzle is just gonna take that edge off a little. The black is just gonna say any note that you wanna play, it's gonna let it rip and do its thing. Now it's really cool. This is where it gets really exciting for a lot of my subscribers because I obviously have a big uh, gaming following. I do a lot of gaming headset reviews. Um, from a gaming perspective, these are absolutely nuts because you know you could talk about soundstage and imaging. I don't really get into soundstage discussion with IEMs too much because most IEMs don't have a good soundstage. They physically can't because it's not interacting or interfacing with your ear or to an extent of speakers, a room. So the soundstage is always gonna be limited. The imaging though is absolutely amazing, especially with the driver matching. And when you factor that in or, or pair that with the detail retrieval that the EA 500s do, um, I had an amazing time playing FPS games. It didn't matter if it was Apex, which is a little bit lighter in the bass, and, and when I switched over to Call of Duty, which has a heavier footstep sound, they just excelled at both. Detail retrieval in playing the subtleties of a track, something soft mixed with something loud, is a hard thing to pull off in a budget category. It usually blurs it a little bit, and the very subtle noises just don't come through clearly. They're rolled off, um, or you just don't hear it that well. Because of this level of separation and detail retrieval and, and all that, you hear everything. I was able to pinpoint footsteps so much better with these than a lot of other, you know, two to $300 gaming headsets, for example. So, you know, think of it that way. Um, this is an amazing IEM, both for music and gaming. And if you paired it with something like the Antlion Kimura, you can even add a cable with a microphone built in and have a pretty bonkers gaming setup for $150. And because these are so sensitive and easy to drive, you can plug this into pretty much anything 
and get the most out of them. So naturally being an audiophile, audio nut, um, I had to experiment and tinker with things. I tried the nozzles, I tried changing the tuning rings to see if extending it did anything, but I also changed source gear a lot. Um, I bought the Linsole Triple Win Zoni balanced cable. This is a 4.4 Pentagon connection, um, 16 core or 16 strand OFC wire. Really nice cable, only 20 bucks on Amazon, pretty inexpensive. Um, and I wanted to pair that with a couple DACs. Now I plug these directly into my laptop. I plug them into my iPhone using an Apple dongle that you see here. I use the new uh, Truth here. This one just came out. This is called the Shio. I'll be reviewing this. Come to this little uh, interesting box. Um, but this is a nice little USB-C DAC for a computer. So if you want something really clean and don't need to spend too much, this is a great little compact option. Then I have these two guys, which I'm really excited to talk about. Um, the Quidelix, uh, which I will be reviewing soon because this is a marvelous little device. This tiny little plastic box, if you will, has so much software goodness to tune. It's pretty remarkable. And it has a balanced 2.5 connection. Then I have the X-Duo XB2 Balance that just came out. This thing is beautiful. It has a glass faceplate. So if you want a DAC that has a fingerprint issue just like your matching EA500, this would actually be a great pairing for that. But in all seriousness, the power handling and, and impact that the XP2 Balanced has from X-Duo is amazing. I love this little red knob here and I have my 4.4 connection. This was my favorite setup using the 4.4 to this because I didn't really feel I needed to EQ the EA500 pretty much at all. I was really, really happy with the sound profile. Otherwise, I would go with the Quidelix because you can do insane parametric EQ. So because I didn't need that, I plugged it all into this and what a setup. I mean, you really don't need to spend a lot to really touch like audiophile level performance when you have a system like this. Again, you can't fix a poorly resolving driver or IEM or headphone. It either does it or it doesn't. This one does and it's tuned exceptionally well and I think... Honestly, this is one of the best listening experiences you can get under 100, provided that it has a sound profile that you like, you know, as far as the bass, mid-range, and treble. I found everything to work really well on it. Um, long story short, I thought, you know, it was balanced well for vocals. I could listen to all different genres. And with hip-hop and EDM, sometimes I wish it had a little bit more bass, but it was really minimal. And when you use it with something like this DAC, um, it didn't really need it at all. So... Uh, anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching this. I have no idea how long I rambled. I'm really excited about these because I've enjoyed them so much. I'm going to be telling a lot of people that under 100, this is kind of like one of my go-tos now. I absolutely love them. They're built well. They're comfortable. They sound great. Uh, I, I couldn't be more happy with them. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching it to the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I'd love to see you make it to the next video we come out with. And with that being said, I'll see you next time. Bye.